In fact, when we think about why stress might be linked to health, stress evolved as a mechanism for dealing with short-term crises. So I'm trying to cross the street and I see a car coming at me really quickly and I need to mobilize really fast. I need to be able to, to it, you know, behave in a way that's going to help me get out of the way. So that's a very effective system for the short term. Um, and the thinking about why it may uh, be problematic for health is that when you reactivate the system over and over and over again with maybe not enough respite and not enough chances to kind of come back down and restore, then there's what we call physiologic wear and tear, which ultimately can damage some of the biological systems and lead to disease initiation. Um, and then there are two pathways by which people think this can happen. One is either because feeling stressed and overwhelmed may make it harder to engage in behaviors that are healthy for us. So, you know, if I'm feeling stressed, I may not feel like going out and exercising. It's easier to eat that big chocolate chip muffin. Um, and then the other pathway is biological. So when I um, experience a sense of stress, there's a, a release of what we call stress hormones that flood the body and alter all kinds of biological systems when they're in play for a long period of time. So a lot of the research, with the idea that stress influences health has been around for a really long time. It's not new, but I would say that in the last couple of decades, the evidence for how and why it's linked to health has gotten increasingly better. Some of the best evidence is in relation to heart disease. So there are many studies now that suggest that people with very high levels of stress are at uh, more than two times the risk of developing heart disease relative to people who are at lower levels of stress. And this risk is not that different from the risk that's conferred by cigarette smoking. It holds when you take account of, um, you know, uh, family history of health and some other factors. And while the evidence is not absolutely conclusive, it's very, very suggestive um, and, and says that we should take it quite seriously. The other thing that's interesting about stress is that it is um, not distributed equally throughout society. So people who have less power and fewer resources and fewer opportunities are more likely to both face many situations that feel very, very demanding and have fewer opportunities to develop the tools that will allow them to manage those situations. And so what we find is that people with less income, less education, lower socioeconomic status um, tend to report higher levels of stress. And in fact, we know that socioeconomic status is associated with health, whereby lower socioeconomic status is associated with worse health. And one of the ideas for why this might happen is because of the higher levels of stress that are induced by these more difficult circumstances. And in fact, there's been a really interesting finding coming out that suggests that um, when kids live in these very difficult social circumstances with high levels of stress where there's a lot of chaos in the household or in the neighborhood, it actually alters their stress biology, their ability to respond to stress, to develop the coping capacities and even their brain architecture so that they are subsequently more susceptible to stress and also to, to, to the health outcomes that may result from that much, much later in life. So one of the goals of research on this topic is to try to figure out what can we do to help people with this, to maybe help kids develop better coping capacities, help adults manage these things, um, how can we interrupt the link between stress and health?